coming to Undici this evening to join us for Lecture 11 it is. Uh, tonight's wines are from the Chianti Zones of Tuscany. Uh, I'm Vic, everyone knows. Uh, always with uh, Anthony Verdoni who does a lot of the speaking. He's an expert on Italian history, culture, wines. I just got back from Italy last night uh, and Usually Tony steals the thunder that we have to go to make sure that we're giving you very current information uh, about wine and food. And uh, I went to Umbria, and Umbria is the, the only region of Italy that is surrounded by all Italian regions. I go not on the normal tour. I try to go to the vineyards and as many wineries and walk and see and feel and touch wine and drink it in all stages. So. I, I took a little quote at this book, and I'm going to tell you about two guys that I met. I think it's so apropos, uh, really, what's special about Italy. And it says uh, in, this, in this book, the Italian word ambiente literally means environment or habitat, but it also refers to ambiance and the feel of a place. Applied to wine, ambiente is not just geology, topography, climate, or, or the vineyard, but it's what surrounds it. The experience of drinking Italian wine isn't complete without the food products that grow in the same soil, nor with the sense of the Creole culture that created the wine. Italians truly thrive on personal contact. And they think very carefully about every aspect of their table. The wine, the food, the people, and the place, and how all of that fits together. And it, it was truly so. I went, our first stop on Saturday was in Umbria in Montefalco. And Montefalco is very famous for uh, uh, kind of a cult grape called Sagrantino de Montefalco. And Paolo Bea is probably one of the most prestigious producers in the area. And until last year, they made the wine in their house. And John Piero Bea is, took over the winemaking from his dad. And he drew a picture when we got there of a seed. And he drew a picture of, this, of a grape with two seeds in it. And he drew the seeds white. I look, and he spoke in a little bit of Italian. And then he colored them in black. And he said, we just got finished with the harvest yesterday because he believes that two days prior to the waning moon, the seeds are still not ripe. And they have a lot of acidic acid and tannin that because the grape uh, skin is so thick on Sagrantino, it makes it too tannin, too green. So he waits till two days after the waning moon and the seeds, they become black, ripe. And that's when he picks his grapes. And he believes that everything in nature happens for a reason. And his sole purpose in winemaking is to embody the nature, the soil, the grapes, what happens in that season, and put it in a bottle. And then we tasted his wines. And uh, my partner and I were drinking the wines very slowly and asking a lot of questions. And he said to us, to Nick in Italian, because Nick speaks Italian, you guys can stay all day because I appreciate how you are handling the wines that you're drinking. That we weren't rushing, that we weren't just drinking to drink. That we drank for a purpose, and the purpose was to understand what was in that bottle. And I, I swear that we could have stayed all day with him. And he had to go to a doctor's appointment with his wife, and he called his mother, who's 80 years old, to come downstairs to stay with us. She sat with us for 45 more minutes while we finish drinking the wine. So it's people like that that make this a pleasure to, for me because the experience of what's in the bottle is so important to a lot of Italian producers. I poured everybody a little glass of red wine. And that red wine is my first wine imported to the United States. It's a uh, Rallo Ripasso de Valpolicella. Uh, it's the 2006 vintage, and I think uh, it's absolutely delicious. You'll taste some cherry notes. It's very well balanced with oak, uh, and it just came to the United States uh, with the help of Tony Verdoni. 
and um, it's our first and hopefully a series of many. Uh, I was just in Italy, and I it's truffle season in Umbria, and so I ordered a nice pasta with truffles, and the guy came and he shaved the truffles on it, and I took a bite, and it was very delicious, and me as the uh, naive American said, scusi, and he came over, <laughs> and uh, I said, formaggio, formaggi, and he, he kind of stood still, and I said, Nick, what did I do? Did I say something wrong? Did I, did I curse at him in Italian? What did I do? And he says, no. I said, no what? No cheese with truffles. So I'm like, I was like, I want a little cheese with my truffles. And he says, no. And so I said, well, ask him why no. So the waiter said, if the chef, he said in the time thing, if the chef sees me putting cheese on your truffles, he will come out here and take this bottle of wine that's on your table and beat me over the head with it. No cheese on my truffles. So, so they were very good anyway. Uh, <coughs> Tony's going to give you a little history of Chianti uh, before the next course is served. Tony, you know. uh, I should tell you that the original formula for Chianti. Uh, was created in the 19th century uh, by Baron Ricasoli. He formulated that Chianti should be four grapes. It should be Sangiovese and Canaiolo, two reds, and it should be Malvasia and Trebbiano, two whites. And through much of the history of Chianti, it was those four grapes. Chianti has basically seven different zones famous is Chianti Classico, which is, is a hilly area between Florence and Siena. It's high in altitude. It's susceptible to hail storms and thunderstorms in the, in the summer, and it's really not very easy to produce good wine every year. And I would say the general rule of thumb, Chianti Classico, good one, you can age five years or so from the vintage. The general rule for Reserva, County Classical Reserva, is 10 years from the vintage. This is 2004, so you could hold on to this for another five years or so. I think you're, you're probably ready for a couple of stories, right? Yes. I stopped at a butcher shop in Cobria, and they had wild chingale prosciutto, and they had them hanging. And on one side, it looked cured like a regular prosciutto with the hook on it. On the other side, it still had the fur. And I said, this is interesting. And I said, I don't think this would go in the United States. Tony and I would like to thank all of you guys for coming tonight. We hope you enjoyed yourself. Come back to another event. Thank